Hello and welcome back to HBM Mod. Last episode we tackled this thing, the entire steel setup, which is um apparently this blast furnace too fast for a hopper. I mean I'm not surprised. I shouldn't be surprised. This is going to make all of the steel we need though for the particle accelerator, which is coming soon, and I will begin building the actual shell for the particle accelerator. On my own, probably. I mean, we got the steel to do it, so I'll get started on that. But, yeah, then we know how big it's gonna be. <laughs> oh, holy crap. And these guys are done, by the way. These lead balls. Lead absorber pellet. Let's turn this thing off real quick. And then, uh, let's get to our next thing today. Which is gonna be neodymium mining. How are we gonna get neodymium? Well, there's two ways that are the, the most optimal ways. The first most preferred method is to go to the roof of the nether and start digging. Um, that's my optimal method, although you could drill neodymium bedrock ore. And remember, neodymium is used in the actual particle accelerator block itself, which might make it worthwhile to drill out of the ground. So, um, that's, that's probably something I should do. Although, I'm gonna go, for, for the purposes of this, the cyclotron, I will go to the nether. If I need, if I think I'm gonna need more, I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling. That's the way I'm gonna do these things. So let's go to the nether. I'll probably go get the drill from over, oh wait a second, we gotta turn off the RBM case. I have not even checked on these things in a while. So I'm wondering what they're up to. Cause I have this guy running Australia. He should be like running out of energy and stuff soon. Yeah, his temperature is way lower. I gotta pull out this guy and it shuts it down. Perfect. That's awesome how depleted those are getting. Well, we'll soon have americium. Uh, this guy just runs on one of these. Let's turn him off. I just need to pull out that guy. Or maybe this guy. Actually, I just need to pull out the Australium because it's the most reactive fuel in there. Boom. That is... And that one's not very depleted, obviously, because that one's not running as hot as this guy is running. This guy runs insane. This is the Australian depleter. We've built this in an episode, so... Alrighty. It's time for us to go to the nether, which I really hate doing, but it's what we gotta do for this. And then we'll get started setting up the cyclotron, maybe even get to use it today, and start making the antimatter, which is what its primary purpose is for. Besides the actual products you can make in it, which are going to be neodymium, strontium stuff that like is really tempting to make, but not really worth it. The only thing really worth it is some of the endgame items you can get with this machine, which are going to be tennessine and stuff like that. The antimatter, of course, being one of the most important things from the machine. The antimatter used to be used in the fusionary launch reactor. An old machine from back in the day, which would, um, I don't even remember how it worked, but you put in the, that stuff, it does stuff. Don't know how it works, because I never used it. I just know it needed antimatter for something, and that's pretty much it. So, we're gonna be climbing to the top of the nether. It, 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 this is all we're doing today. Straight up mining. Ah, uh, here we are. Now, the top of the nether is actually a great place to start looking for neodymium because once you have this pickaxe, if you have if you don't have this pickaxe and you need neodymium anyway, just get yourself some mining charges. You'll be pretty much set anyway. So just start digging around up here and eventually you will find your way to neodymium chunks or lava. Whatever comes first. Uh, it looks like here we just have lava, which is not what I'm looking for, but there is a cave over there. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that, see what we got here. Looks like it might have neodymium hiding in this. Wait, uh, I didn't see any. The nether depth rock ore is kind of, um, on the top is kind of rare. And we found some. It took a little bit, but as you can see, if you have this pickaxe, you'll be able to fortune these guys and get neodymium. And back in the day, on the 112 version, what I did with these neodymium pieces is I would take them and run them through the thermal expansion machines 
and literally cheese the entire game and just make four times the neodymium. Which was, I mean, pretty wacky, but, uh, I mean, I guess it works. I'm not even sure if it works in this 1.7.10 version, because the 1.7.10 version, uh, it's much better about things like that, usually. Because you cannot just mine Dash from Galacticraft and use that. It, well, I don't think the 112 version did that. Actually, we didn't. We never found that out. We never got the Galacticraft Dash in that version. Even with a Bismuth pickaxe, you'll see that mining this stuff is a lot like mining this with... Um, does actually the actual Chlorophyte pickaxe have a better tier of fortune? I don't remember. Because, I mean, it does, does mine a little bit faster, doesn't it? Or does... Oh... Oh, oh, okay, now that's what that's for. Clearly, it's a good thing we made that, even though it's such a waste on the silk touch front. It doesn't have silk touch on it. It's actually useless for that. But for this, Fortune 4, it's going to give us a load. Can it mine unmineable? Oh, yes, it can. Look at that. Look how many gave us. This is a lot of neodymium. Easy peasy neodymium. Remember, this is going to get used in the particle accelerator, this neodymium stuff. We're definitely going to end up with neodymium coils due to the size that I'm expecting this thing to be. Uh, it's going to be massive. It's going to be one of the things that's going to take, like, a lot of our resources, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be exciting to have. Alright, I've mined all of this, which is a lot, and let's go. Out of the nether. How are we gonna how are we gonna do this? Well, this is the easiest part. All I have to do is fall a couple thousand blocks and hope I don't land in lava. And I mean that's not a problem for me because I mean Oh crap, almost stepped on those. You know, that's probably gonna look how many that gave us. That's a lot. <laughs> Actually a lot. Oh uh, how far do I have to walk to get through the nether? Though, girl, come on, this is going to be far. Th 93, we're getting there, oh, here we are, safe. Oh, that was perfect. Hey, dudes, check how much we get. Four stacks of 64. Oh, wait, you thought it was only four? It's eight, nine. It's a stack of ingots. Just from that one, using the mercury, using not the mercury touch, using fortune four, I've gotten that much. And there's no other option with the um, bedrock, or no, depth rock ore. If, if you find depth rock ore, you need to use the chlorophyte pickaxe or better on it. The, the only thing better than chlorophyte is mesa miner. Although, it could be argued that chlorophyte sucks because it doesn't have auto shredder and silk touch, so. <laughs> I mean, it's got mercury touch, I mean. Let's go ahead and bring the RBMKs back online, uh, get them up and running again, because of course we need that to happen. Needs to happen right now. Let's go ahead and set that up. Boom. And this guy is going to be going, not, hopefully not boom. <laughs> that is probably not something I want to say next to my RBMKs that might just explode at any second. <laughs> I mean this guy, less likely than the other guy. There we go. Running perfectly. Beautiful. And how's this guy doing? He's cooking up the fuel and very rapidly decaying into nothingness. So, I mean, that's that's wonderful. Well, the temperature's rapidly decreasing. Alrighty. So, we know what we're done with now. Is the, the neodymium, clearly. He has no more neodymium. We have six more ingots to go. Holy crap, dude. A mount of neodymium is ridiculous. So much. Oh, I worked so hard for all this neodymium. Holy crap. Alright, we have our 16 neodymium, we have our 16 gold. This is technically enough to make one segment of a, fu of a particle accelerator, not a fusion reactor. Let me go ahead and show you what that would look like. It's kind of like this, and then on the outside coating you have those um, outside blocks, so that's how you do that, uh, when we get to that, <laughs> you'll see it's a big donut made like that. I don't remember the specifics of it from back in the day, 
But this should be everything we need, bar the circuits, which are also done. Awesome. Now let's make it. Let's make the actual cyclotron. Awesome. So, I don't know if this needs a coolant loop, what it needs. Hopefully it's a coolant loop, and not a coolant drain. Maybe it goes low coolant to high coolant, and then I can just do the thing like that. That'd be amazing. Oh, here it is. This is the cyclotron. One big machine here. And these things are like little magic things you can do to the cyclotron. I don't remember how this works. I There's a video of it somewhere, so you can find that if you want. Oh, it's just a water loop now. Okay, now that's interesting. So this turns water into low pressure steam, as you can see here, which then needs to be condensed either via the condenser machine, which is, we're not gonna use the electric condenser. This does not need an electric condenser, right? Uh, the coolant loop was really annoying, I think. It used, to, it used to just consume coolant. It used to just drink the stuff. But anyway, that means I can just make like 10 condensers and I'll be fine. Not the electric condensers. Those are exp expensive. This. Cast cover plate. Iron. Steel. Yeah. How many of them do I want? I don't know yet. Let's see how many I can make. <laughs> make them all. Dude, I can make a ton of them. This makes 16. Uh, I'll need three, actually, to make 16 of the cast cover plates. It's 24 times 2, so I need 48. It's 21. 42, 47, 48, perfect. Since you're all wondering what this lead watch pellet thing can do, let's put it inside the thing here and see what it gives us. Basically, these lead watch pellets give you bismuth. I already know this, but here's the magic for you. 12 bismuth, a whole bismuth ingot. There you go. Those are amazing. We haven't even made CMB steel yet. Hey, can we get a CMB steel drill tip? That actually might be a good idea. Like, honestly, it'd be a tier buff there or uranium, honestly. I mean, why would you need a tier buff that? Don't know, but hey, maybe extra fortune or something. Not that it needs extra fortune. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. This prob. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I'll just let it do its thing. It's got three copper ingots in there. Awesome. With this, we have the machine done. So that's going to be 16 total of these guys is a lot. I mean, I don't need 16 of these guys, honestly. I could probably just make an electric condenser and be fine, but um might not even needs not might not even need all of them. That's the thing. I could definitely make cooling tires, but I don't want to ruin the way my base looks. Well, I mean, it would look nice in a different base, just not my base. Alrighty, we got one last thing to do with these. We gotta put these down on the thing upstairs. Gotta hook these up. So, we're gonna have one that goes to water, one that goes to low pressure steam. Which, we should have them like this. Basically, do something like that. Uh, and have the actual pipe go inside of them. Then, oh... That does create a bit of a problem, doesn't it? Well, that should be fine. Here is the water to low pressure steam pipeline. Do we have a barrel? This guy doesn't have anything in him, does he? Perfect. Awesome. Then I'll just fill the barrel with water, put the water in, and we're almost good to run the machine. Oh, yes. So here's the water. Here's the barrels. It's set to water now. And now let's go ahead and do this. So that way it's outputting into the machine. It can hold 32,000. Recipes. What recipe do we want to do first? Boron to alumi aluminum? Nah. Nep uranium to neptunium. It's an option. Uh, iodine to polonium. How do you get iodine? Oh, bromine. Coal with copper. Well, that's a bit of a process now, isn't it? Main thing here that you can do is make... Well, cesium. <laughs> That's a very expensive machine. A very expensive thing to make. Uh, Tennessee. Plutonium powder is the starting point with those. 
You can also do Vertikium, which doesn't really have a use. These used to have uses. Um, Vertikium, Vertusium, or whatever. And all the other ones. Unobtainium, which is a reference to Avatar. You know, the one with the blue people. And you can't even use these for anything. So, I mean, there's no use for these. Wait, what? <laughs> Most recipes with this involve turning one thing into another thing, and then having to turn the other thing into another thing. So, for example, you want gold? <laughs> you gotta make niobium. Or, no, no, what is it? Neodymium. But here we got... Oh, the actinium. Well, actinium is pretty useful for, um... What is it called? The actual things. The, um... I don't know what they're called. Uh, -oh. uh, being able to turn lead into radium, that's pretty useful. Cesium to lanthanium. Well, that's also, actually, that's amazing. Uh, radium? What is this used in? Nothing. See, those guys don't have uses anymore. You can turn ionized particles straight into shrubidium nuggets, which is... Very expensive and not worth it. But what is worth it is this. The polonium recipe here, mercury, plus carbon dust to polonium. We'll definitely be doing that. All right, let's start making that polonium recipe happen since that one looks really amazing. Oh, yeah, I forgot we need to power the machine too, which I'll hook that up in a second. But for now, let's see about getting this polonium recipe set up, which is going to cost us... Mercury drops, which I have over here. Probably. More than likely have the stuff we need to do this. <laughs> 64. 64. Dude. Okay, now the next thing. We have to... I need to get some of this coal powder. So I need to either auto-shred it, or I need to fortune this. Or I need to silk touch it. Which is probably what I should do. So touch. So touch for sure. For sure. Um, and then just process it through the system upstairs. Alright. So we got the actual stuff to make. Which is the carbon. Which To make the actual carbon things. You need to do this. You need to do rubber. And coal power. It used to be insulators dude. But hey. I see that's actually better. Because it gives you 8 times as much. 8 times the amount. Dude. That's awesome. I'm gonna make a bunch of this carbon. Well, actually, no, not really. I'm gonna just make eight pieces because I only need a stack for this. That's right, only need one stack. Great thing about the cyclotron is you can do three recipes at once. So, holy crap, that's fast. Uh, that looks like a lot more than 16. <laughs> we made 44 copper plates. I mean, uh, that's fine. I don't, I don't see a problem with 44 gas copper plates. I mean, I, I think that means I'll be making a lot more condensers in the future. That's for sure. We do need those for the ICF. Alrighty. So this is fully powered, 100 million HE. So about as much as the fusion reactor uh, plasma injector costs. So it's a lot of energy, but hey, it should be fine. Now, we're going to need these guys. going to split them into three groups. And then we're going to split these guys into three groups. And that's the cyclotron right there. Holy crap. Awesome little machine. It's going to make some stuff. And it's going to do some things. So let's see this thing make stuff. Oh wait, I got to be watching this thing though. Because this thing gets clogged with steam. It could cause some issues. And if it gets too much antimatter, that can probably also cause some issues. Let's go ahead and get a screenshot of that too. Um, just because, uh, da, 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 da. so this will give us antimatter now, which there's not a lot of room for antimatter in there. You need to get a magnetic barrel for antimatter. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like antimatter is not even going to be a problem. This basically allows me to turn mercury drops, which are not very expensive, into the polonium-210, which is a very valuable material, just using boxes of carbon, which is pretty ridiculous, I mean, honestly. Now, the question is, how do I do this puzzle? Because I know there's a puzzle with these, and I just forgot how to do them. 
One of them takes powder, one of them takes one thing, and then this takes something else. This also takes another thing. 